Greetings, welcome, welcome. So in the last installment of my video log, um, we took like a single bent welding rod, and when you put it across two um, pickup coils, they don't behave the same as if the pickup coils have independent cores. You've given a, a path between the two, a magnetic flux path between the two. So as I was thinking about that, I was going to bed and was thinking, gosh, I wonder if they have iron-infused PLA, and sure enough, they do. And I mentioned that, and I also showed that it's, um, uh, I, I picked up some from Protoplasta, which is 45% iron and 55% PLA. So what I'm showing in this video is uh, an attempt to see, can you print cores for electromagnets, for transformers, for whatever you want that are ferromagnetic but you've 3D printed them because if you can't, uh, I mean it opens up a world of fun. So I mentioned I think in the last video that um, I'm just auto leveling the bed here I'm gonna, um, but that I found this filament that is 45% um, iron and so I thought, gee, can you print a core with that? So I was reading a little bit um, last night, and for instance, like the magnetic permeability of iron, because they use iron powder in cores, in um, transformer cores, and the magnetic permeability is dependent a fair amount on the purity of the iron. That, like, if it's 99% pure, it doesn't have a high magnetic permeability, but if it's 99.9% .9 pure, it has very high magnetic permeability. And then I'm not even sure, you know, I think it's magnetic permeability that you want to be concerned with to some extent. Um, so magnetic permeability is how easily a ferromagnetic domain flips in response to an external magnetic field. So if you have a substance with a very high magnetic permeability, and there are some that are much higher than, than iron, um, I, I think mu metal and sun dust and things like that, a weak magnetic field and they flip easily. Um, and then you have what are called magnetically hard materials where it takes a very strong magnetic field to flip them. And if I understand correctly, that's what they use in making permanent magnets, like the neodyniums. They flip it, but then it stays, and it doesn't care if it sees a magnetic field, because it was flipped, I guess, at real high temperature and very high magnetic field strength. Um, so that, so what, you know, what I'm saying is I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I kind of do, but I kind of don't. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is magnetic permeability is part of it. I mean, you want it to have a higher magnetic permeability than air. Um, but I think there are other factors that come into play. I mean, maybe if you had a real high magnetic permeability, the thing would just saturate real easily. And I don't know. But I know that they use iron powder for core. And this has got iron powder 45%. Um, so it might not work. You know, as um, as the commander of the Dallas, the the submarine, the Dallas said to um, Jack Ryan in the Hunt for Red October, still probably about a million things that can go wrong with this stunt, Ryan. So that's about where we are right now. It it may not work well as a core, but you know you can back up, look at it the other way. They put lamentations in iron cores. So this thing's like got plenty of space between the magnetic domains. So it might work really well as a magnetic core. The other thing, it might not print. You know, I will say the one thing I've got it to do so far is just extrude some. And you can see it is magnetic. Um, the next thing is I mean, I was reading, it might print, but it might print, like, look like garbage. And I was also reading, I've got a brass nozzle, and someone was saying, you will probably want to use stainless steel. 
because it's going to chew up the brass nozzle. I've got one more nozzle, but I could order some stainless steel. I'm sure they're not like a hundred bucks. And as I think I was also saying in another video, this is a um, any cubic Neo 2. It was a 179, 169 bucks, somewhere around there. So I mean, this isn't like a thousand dollar printer, which is also nice like in terms of taking a little bit of risk but hopefully the worst that would happen is um, it might screw up the nozzle and I'd have to replace that but to uh, get down to it you never know unless you try so oh wait let me put down some uh, some hairspray so we're gonna have a go here at printing the, the coil form I guess the last point I make is um, you want to use a hundred percent infill when you're doing this because um, you know it's it's already it's 45 percent iron powder so it's going to be 55 percent PLA but then you don't want to use you know have it like um, 30 percent material and 70 percent air is I mean I imagine it would do something but then you really don't have much iron in your core at all let's take a look what is going on um, Having trouble telling yet. It's a different color. It's more of a gray. It looks like it might be printing. <laughs> I'm trying not to to be excited. I think it's printing. This would be really cool if this works. And it, if the first one works, I'm just going to print all kinds of um, different potential cores. Um, because I hope that, that it holds together. Alright. I'm cautiously optimistic. Get back to you in a bit. So while that's printing, I'll just show you the idea here. I printed these in just regular PLA. And, you know, if I wanted to be sneaky, I could just, like, not have told anyone it was magnetic uh, iron and viewed PLA. <laughs> yeah, everyone would be, you're a dummy man. You put in PLA as your core is stupid. It still might be stupid, but at least you know I have an idea. Um, so the other reason why it was good that I did this is it took me four tries to get this right. This is a half inch diameter hole. So normally you would put you know like make this maybe 0.49 and that would give you enough leeway. It would fit in there snugly. I don't know if it's the 100% infill or what's going on. I had to take this all the way down to 0.45 in order to get them to both fit. But here's, you know, here's the idea for this part. Put that there. Put the other half in. And then, like, here's a... I just line this up eyeballing it on the on the Tinkercad, but it it looks pretty good. So I mean you want you want your two cores centered over the two magnets and now you have have this here. Then I actually even have a backup plan if and I'm hoping it doesn't, but if that falls apart. You take something like this and then you could bend some welding rods, put it through there, go into there, bend some welding rods, put it through here, go into there, glue those two together, and then you have a, a U-shaped welding rod curve. I'm going to keep an eye on the thing because I don't want it to mess up. So here is our first 3D printed uh, core material. So there it is with a 45% iron powder and here was a, a PLA model. So here's a magnet. So I'm getting curious. Um, while the printer is working, I'm going to print a lot more parts for this uh, and see what happens with that. I, you know, we still don't know what it's gonna, whether it'll work halfway decent as a core, but I'm starting to think it's ferromagnetic. You know, it's not sticking as strongly as it would say to a welding rod but it's sticking so i'm going to print a bunch more parts now 
Okay, so for the moment, I think I'm going to stop printing. Um, this works. I'm, I'm actually, I'm pleased as punch, and, and I'm excited. And just once again, you know, this is PLA. This is PLA with iron, ferromagnetic PLA. So, um, and you can see, well, look, let me kind of put it together a little bit for you. So you see, that's where your energizer coils are, or pickup or generator coils will go. And now you've got a bus line between each of them, and they, they should be just about centered over each magnet. And then you can put in another core, say this could be like a drive, um, a drive coil. And there's a few things. I mean, now run it this like as an air core, run it with this, run it with welding rods, see how they behave differently. Um, so in other words, I mean, you have everything set up to, you know, have your control and experimental groups. And I printed them in two parts like this, basically just because of um, the printer in terms of not wanting to have overhangs. But that also, you know, it puts in a lamentation too. So it, it might be really good. It might stink. I mean, I don't know if maybe the magnetic flux will not get over to the other coil as well as it did when I just put in that single welding rod. But really, you know, I mean, I don't know how it's gonna work yet. If we go to the, this is like the, um, the data sheet that Protopasta put out, which was nice of them. It's metal powder. They don't say how pure it is. Um, where is, uh, particle size, I'm not sure. There's another part that I wanted to see here. Well, it's actually up here. So. They have induction at magnetic saturation 0.15 Tesla. I I have no idea what that... I mean, I know what that means in general, but I mean, I have no idea whether that's good or bad. Relative to air permeability between 5 to 8, 5 and 8, uh, which I think means it's far, far less permeable than um, a powdered iron core, although I could be wrong. Again, you know, I mean, I don't have a, a career or a PhD in this. But it's better than air, so better than an air core. This one caught my attention. Permeability independent of frequency up to one megahertz. That's interesting. So, I mean, as I said, there's a zillion things. I mean, just putting this on um, the desktop and just pulsing it, you know, independent of anything spinning and seeing what you get dragging off of uh, the inductive spike and all that. So I'm getting carried away. Um, and whatnot. So as I said, I was getting excited. <laughs> so I just started like printing these things because here's, I mean, you kind of maybe guess what I was thinking is, all right, if this works, you've now got a big thick bus line going out to here. And the only, you know, as I said, we already got rid of like half um, or more of the spin loss. And that was with a single welding rod. And so I'm hoping that this improves it, but you've just, you've got the U, but I bet it would like a circle better. I bet then it would, it could, you know, really have room to go around. And, you know, I was thinking about what I was saying earlier in the video about how, you know, iron has a high magnetic permeability. Permanent magnets have a low magnetic permeability. So they're hit with a strong field and then lock in place. And I was thinking, well, maybe you could put one of these on top of each of your magnets, and then you have a low, uh, sorry, a high permeability path. But then I was thinking, no, that's not gonna, that's not gonna do anything because you still got this giant air gap. What you would probably want would be a bar between here and here. Print a an iron bar between there and there. But then, does that screw up its function? as a pickup coil. I don't know. So what I'm saying is rather than me just speculating about um, how many angels are on the, the head of a pin, it's it's time to get busy and start gathering some data and looking at it. But I am very optimistic. I'm very pleased that this printed so well. And if it can transfer flux decently, there's a lot of interesting things to do. I'm not going to go too far ahead of myself, but just to tell you how 
pleased I am that this printed well. The printer seems to have held up fine. I mean, here's something I designed before the printer roll even arrived. You can kind of take a guess what that is. Oh, I set it up there. <laughs> but, you know, that could be printed. You can think about printing this whole thing now as ferromagnetic magnetic PLA. I mean, what would that do? Would it, I mean, I'm just curious. Would it spin at all? Would it have a great flux path then if you, you know, you have that there? All right, enough. Um, that's, that's the end of this video. And in the next video, we're going to see how this, this does and um, return to this... Uh, this idea of uh, like flux gating or whatever you want to call it, but just having a another flux path between two pickup coils. So thanks everyone for coming along and talk to you later. Ciao.